A Nautical Ballad by Charles Edward Carroll Read for LibriVox.org by Dailybub A capital ship for an ocean trip was the walloping window blind. No gale that blew dismayed her crew or troubled the captain's mind. The man at the wheel was taught to feel contempt for the wildest blow, and it often appeared, when the weather had cleared, that he'd been in his bunk below. The boatswain's mate was very sedate, yet fond of amusement, too, and he played hopscotch with the starboard watch while the captain tickled the crew. And the gunner we had was apparently mad, for he sat on the after reel and fired salutes with the captain's boots in the teeth of the booming gale. The captain sat in a commodore's hat and dined in a royal way on toasted pigs and pickles and figs and gummery bread each day. But the cook was Dutch and behaved as such, for the food he gave the crew was a number of tons of hot cross buns chopped up with sugar and glue. And we all felt ill as mariners will on a diet that's cheap and rude and we shivered and shook as we dipped the cook in a tub of his gluesome food. Then nautical pride we laid aside, and we cast the vessel ashore on the gulliby isles, where the poo-poo smiles and the anagazanders roar. Composed of sand was that favoured land, and trimmed with cinnamon straws, and pink and blue were the pleasing hue of the tickle-toe-teaser's claws and we sat on the edge of a sandy ledge and shot at the whistling bee, and the binnacle bats wore waterproof hats as they danced in the sounding sea. On rubagub bark from dawn to dark we fed till we had grown uncommonly shrunk. When a Chinese junk came by from the Torriby zone, she was stubby and square, but we didn't much care, and we cheerily put to sea and we left the crew of the junk to chew on the bark of the rubagub tree. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.